Hello, I'm Emmy Ward. I'm the lead tutor at the Inclusive Folk Project at the English Folk Dance and Song Society and I also work at Soundabout and I'm a freelance music practitioner using Sounds of Intent. I'd like to share with you today some simple low-tech ideas for creative music sessions. Listening is really important and listening skills are often given less priority than playing skills. If someone recognises a familiar song consistently over songs that they don't like as much, I think that's really exciting and I think it really shows a lot of musical potential and awareness because there's quite a lot going on when you recognise a song. And what are you recognising? Are you recognising the rhythm and of the words? Are you recognising the sound of the singer's voice, the intro, the beat, the sound of the instruments? There's just so much going on. And as a starting point, you can take that familiar song and kind of break it down. And you can try singing it a cappella, or you can try just playing the tune. And you can try and work out what the person's responding to. And then you can have fun with that. So how do we support someone to play an instrument? Well, first of all, it's really important to give people um, a really wide range of choice to try out different instruments to see what's easiest initially and also what they enjoy playing. Think about where the instrument is in relation to the person and consider some different placements. So you can hold the instrument, you could have it to the side, Often it's better so that it really takes a space in the lap of the person so they have as much access to the instrument as possible. Something like a flat drum or a barrel horn like this is really great because um, you just have this lovely um, access to the instrument right in the centre of your body. Another thing that you can do is wear instruments. I mean, we're used to wearing um, these bells on ankles and wrists. Um, you could consider sewing some bells on a hat and looking in the mirror and seeing yourself play. Um, another thing that you could do is buy one of these luggage belts, which are about a pound on eBay, and you can tie that around the person's waist or across their wheelchair, across the arms of the wheelchair. And then what you can do is you can thread on different percussion instruments like maracas and bells and things like that put a blanket um, or a cushion on the lap to protect it and what's really great about this is that um, many people find it quite hard work holding an instrument for a sustained period of time and they'll drop it um, and this uh, is not going to fall because it's around your waist or whatever um, and so you can play it explore it release it and then you've got it again when you're interested. Uh, it's important to be sensitive to cues that the person playing wants to stop. Uh, they may need to just process the sounds they've heard and as sound about say, sound is as important as silence. All music is made up of a pattern of sound and silence. Um, also we can get tired or distracted and it's good to have an idea about building up playing skills one step at a time and not expecting sustained playing all the time. Making changes is one of the best ways of extending someone's interest in the shared music making activity and um, it's really good for uh, working on playing skills, for working on listening skills and uh, for building more and more interaction together. So some of the things, of course, that we would do are quiet to loud, loud to quiet, slow and fast, um, starting and stopping. One, two, three, four. A uh, high and low, making sounds that get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, and, higher, and they get lower and lower and lower. Another way of playing around with the volume is playing an instrument closer and getting further away, or side to side, or behind the person. 
side to side, moving across, do they track it? Do they track the sound? It sounds really obvious and also pretty difficult at times, but if you can keep the environment as simple as possible when doing a music activity, so that's avoiding extra sound disturbance, disruption, activity, movement, uh, visual stimuli, whatever, uh, then you're more likely to have the person you're working with be able to focus on the sound that they're they're making, they're feeling, they're listening to. Uh, but obviously that's an ideal scenario which we don't always have. For years in my music practice, I've really appreciated the benefit of an attention-grabbing instrument like this one uh, because it's really good at combining sound with other senses and having an appeal to people who perhaps don't find sound and music that interesting because they're more interested in their other senses at this time. So this is um, a little child's toy accordion that I bought secondhand, very cheap, you can get them on eBay, but it just does so many interesting things. It smells really musty probably been stuck in someone's attic for a long time. It has lovely colours and movement. The cardboard feels really interesting. It makes a different sound in itself. It produces a gust of wind, a bit like a fan when it moves, which is another sensory experience. And it's actually quite interesting to play because you move it and you press these buttons. Doesn't sound very pretty, especially as I can't play it. I wouldn't advise playing it in a group. It's better for an individual sensory exploration, I would say. Uh, but something like this is really, really useful. So it's really good to look at how you can combine sound with other sensory experiences. And some examples of that could be, of course, dancing when you listen to music and feeling the shift of your weight and your balance. It could be that you sing to somebody and you move close enough so that they can see your facial expressions and your face changing as you sing. It could be that you give somebody a massage and with each different massage stroke, you combine that with a different vocal sound or a different sound on an instrument. It could also be that you just really look at the contrasting qualities of different sound makers. So it could be something like the rough string on the outside of an African drum, the changing weight of an ocean drum as you move it from side to side, or the cold metal of a chime bar. Another way of combining sound and senses is by creating sensory songs. And this works in a similar way to sensory stories in that you are not gonna have too many lines of lyric um, you're going to have a different sensory experience appealing to a broad range of senses accompanying every line. It's best to either sing it a cappella or chant it and over time you're supporting that person to understand the meaning of the song and you're also creating a lovely multi-sensory experience to accompany the musical experience. You can start off with a sensory song and then you can listen to the song, um, dance, play along, vocalise, whatever. I work at the English Folk Dance and Song Society and lead a project called Inclusive Folk. And for many years we've been doing sensory songs based on traditional songs in the repertoire. Um, and they're just full of brilliant stories and very rich imagery that um, uh, have storytelling, history, tradition. Um, really interesting themes like the hard life of a sailor at sea, coal mining, loads of songs about nature and different events of the year. I think it's just um, vast the potential to make songs into sensory songs and I would really invite you to have a go. But for today I'd just like to thank you for listening to me. I hope that you can take something useful away with you from what I've been saying today. And I'd like to leave you with a sensory song that we adapted from a traditional English song called What Shall We Do With The Herring's Head? And it's all about the different things that you can do with the herring. Thank you very much.
shall we do with the herring's head? Turn it into loaves of bread. Herring's head, loaves of bread, and all such things. Of all the fish that are in the sea, the herring's the king of the fish for me. Bunker doodle die, go, bunker doodle die. What shall we do with the herring's tail? Turn it into ships and sails. Herring's tail, ships and sails, herring's head, loaves of bread and all such things. Of all the fish that are in the sea, the herring's the king of the fish for me. Bunker doodle die, go, bunker doodle die. What shall we do with the herring's What should we do with the herring's belly? Turn it into something smelly. Herring's belly, something smelly. Herring's eyes, a light that shines. Herring's tail, ships and sails. Herring's head, loaves of bread and all such things. Of all the fish that are in the sea, the herring's the king of the fish for me. What should we do with the herring's fins? Turn it into baking tins. Herring's fins, baking tins. Herring's belly, something smelly. Herring's eyes, a light that shines. Herring's tail, ships and sails. Herring's head, loaves of bread and all such things. Of all the fish that are in the sea, the herring's the king of the fish for me. Of all the fish that are in the sea, the herring.